What's going on guys? Hitballs here with a tutorial on getting the basics of movement into UE4. Now I have a character here already set up and I can have him move, okay? And I can have him stop and I can have him reverse. And that's basically all I can do. Now I want to make one hell of a heavy disclaimer right now and it should be pretty obvious what I'm about to talk about is the sliding of his feet. This sliding of his feet is actually not happening. It's so bizarre for me to actually say that, but it's not happening. What you're seeing is not happening because it's happening because I'm recording. That's why. If I stop recording and I've shown it in a shadow play recording, you can go and double check. Your character moves perfectly fine. This only happens when I specifically have Camtasia in the middle of a recording. If I pause to, you know, take a break or whatever, uh, the root motion is still broken. He is still moving too fast for, for this, okay? Um, so I don't know what causes that. It seems to me, to be honest, like this is actually some kind of possible threading issue. I really don't know, but it seems fundamentally deep to me and out of my league. So I don't know what causes this. Hopefully um, I'm bringing it to light, to be honest, because it's weird. Uh, there might be an issue and maybe it affects uh, final produced games. Maybe they'll act like this if people are trying to, you know, YouTubers or something to try to record your game and, and all of a sudden all the animations are all squirrely just because they're using some recording software. That's weird. So it worries me a little bit, but like I said, please rest assured the fact is, is that the character is not supposed to be moving too fast it's just a glitch okay um, and now let's actually get into it now I want to show you guys that I have actually done this I built it basically obviously I got it sitting here working but I'm gonna redo it uh, for everybody so that you guys can follow along should you want and I've decided to do this uh, basically just as kind of like a create new folder and I'll just call this like tutorial version you know and I'm just gonna dupe everything over to here so we'll get started but I also need to preface a few other things because the road to getting a character into Unreal Engine 4 doesn't exactly always start in Unreal Engine 4 right usually starts over here or in Maya wherever you're at here in Maya God rest your soul because it sucks for games in my opinion alright so and yeah I've used it Let's um let's go over this really quick. So in one of the videos in the past, uh, hopefully you guys have, are following along with those and are keeping up. If not, yeah, maybe you could follow up on those. But um, if you're confused, um, I personally had a bit of a, a road of discovery to actually figuring out, hey, what is the real way to get the root motion out of this thing? Because the cat has a system for it, which is this extraction node, but it had been broken and glitchy and previously uh, for me and I didn't know what to do now um, we do know now thanks to uh, the comments of let me move this so thank you to T Capstick 100 for giving me probably one of the most ass saving comments that I've ever received uh, this Everything he said here is that exactly true. Um, you can read it here if you would like, but there's not, there's not a bit of untruth here. I agree with everything he said, especially the last sentence. So it's very cool, and here's the answer here. Um, because I had to, I did my retraction video, and I did that because I'm worried about my, you know, I, I don't want to steer anybody stray, right? It's not my reputation. It's just simply because if I let that info go, you guys are going to be all screwed up, and you're going to be upset. And it doesn't matter that you're upset at me because I don't know you personally. So it's not like I'm you know worried about offending somebody but at the same time man I really wouldn't want to be upset like that myself I've been in that situation where I've been steered in a weird way through a tutorial or something and I'm like what you know and then I, and I find myself upset and I know that in the you know even though we don't know each other you're st you know it's my fault so I do everything in my power to make sure that if I'm gonna if I say something wrong I'm gonna correct it as fast as I can and try to retract anything that is incorrect okay so I'll, I'll go and re-edit things if I have to it's very important to me that the information is actually up to date and, and correct now not always up to date but correct okay so I, I'm doing this here to show you guys what what we did here now when I did the retraction I said hey this thing kinda sucks it's broken it's glitchy don't use it um, it would be nice because it's a very 
very cool idea. But the fact is, is you can use it, and it's more than a cool idea. It's a freaking necessity. So let's just go with it, right? We're going to basically, we can activate it by doing over here, we grab the hub, and we can come over here, and we can pop the root extraction node out. But originally, it was breaking. So what you want to do, first step, once you have actually created your character, is to grab the pelvis and come to the hierarchy tab go to link info and all the way over here under the animation mode you want to check additive to setup pose now that's possibly going to squirrelize anything you've done if you've already got animations you are going to find that you have a little bit of fixing to do however again just like you know capstick here said I agree with everything he said there will be some adjustments but it's not that big of a deal because what will probably happen is if you change this to world and you change this to that coordinate is most likely when you check this well I don't know if I can do this on this motion layer uh, but if, if I bring up idle I'll stop ignoring idle I can now animate this because it's an absolute layer most likely when you check that your pelvis is going to get ended up shot down to like this and possibly like that okay or possibly like that I don't know which way it goes but all you gotta do is change the world coordinate system and then change to the use the transform coordinate center which would be the world's center and just rotate it back up don't be an auto key okay um, and yeah you should be perfectly fine and the other cool thing is that once you do that all the other animations too they all just work now too like that root motion thing is not breaking at all. It's perfectly under his ass. And here's another another cool thing. I'm just going to keep going with all the cool things. Because this is actually kind of new. I'm going to create just a new absolute layer, just a random one. Okay, just pop that down. And you can see here, do -do 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 -do, no animation here, but I'll go ahead and auto key it. And let's just say here, uh, you know, I go down like that or something. And then here, I come down like that. And then here. I come up like that, and then here. You can see every time I touch the thing, it's updating it. Every time I touch the the slider, see, as soon as I go over a keyframe, well, my, my kneecap needs the the freaking pole vector added. That's that's completely beside the point. But um, then that would fix that. Don't worry about that. That would fix it. The pole vector on the or up vector. Um, but look, the the this thing got updated, and I can go, you know, I can keep adding new keys. You know, it's like, oh, in this part of the animation, he's now flying forward with a with a pelvic thrust. Whoosh, right? Maybe he needs to be a little bit more like this. So more like a quagmire move. There you go, right? But look at the transform. Notice how it hasn't updated yet. Right? So we take that key out. And it doesn't come forward. See that? You might ask why. It's because we did linear motion. Okay? Linear motion is essentially, just wanted to explain this, is uh, what it'll do is it'll figure out what the first direction that this thing moved was, which was to the right and left, and we'll lock it into that axis. Okay? the very first movement. It'll lock it into that axis. So what you'll get is uh, when I took the pelvis forward, you'd see that it won't come forward when I when I turn this on. Okay, It only gets locked in the first axis that got registered. So if you don't want that, some, I mean this is actually can be turned off and on on a per export basis and that's how I do it. So for something like this I would turn that off and go ahead and export and I would be fine. Right? Obviously it's a stupid animation but you can see how I can just I'm I have no problem here. Like like let's add like an, an even a, a local adjustment layer and let's just say over time that the pelvis is just kinda I don't know, we'll say drifting that way or something. And you can see that as it's drifting, you know, or as it was been moved, because I didn't actually keyframe it. On, on frame zero, but now it, it drifts and it's just it's just perfect. It's it's 100% alignment because of that awesome button here that should always just be on anyway because having it off doesn't ever help. 
So, uh, like I said, so when you do this, this is how you go. So I'm just going to go through now real quick, uh, as, as quick as I can. Let me dump some of these layers that I created that were just stupid. And what I want to do first is go over what we need to export for our skeletal mesh. Okay. Now I like to go and do this. You can actually export them like this in an idle pose, and that way, if the character actually glitches into a T pose for some weird reason, which it shouldn't do, um, it's actually not that dramatic of a of a glitch. Uh, it's just kind of a way to mask it. This is from 10, 15 years ago when these glitches were just in every game. Uh, but now it's not like that. So we're going to export in T pose or A pose in this case, uh, because I'm lazy about the way I modeled the character and all that stuff, uh, trying to get it done fast. So what I need exported is I need from the transform every single bone above it, which should be 61 objects, and I need the actual mesh itself that was frozen, so I'm just going to hold control and click that. Now all I got to do is export this into wherever I want, Okay, and I'll just do it here, and I'm going to make a new folder and this is going to be called uh, tutor rat tutor rat tutorial rat and this will be tutor rat and we'll just call him actually no I'm gonna keep my naming convention SK mesh okay skeletal mesh alright and I hit save so I had all the bones and the mesh so let's just keep this up here and we'll go through this okay so I never like that on we do want this convert dummies uh, we don't want turbo smooth and we do want smoothing groups I for some reason have a glitch with my um, new version of max where I can't, I can't uh, keep my presets um, we want animation checked although it doesn't in this case actually need it um, usually you kinda wanna remove the single key that's just like hey this thing's you know it's got a keyframe at frame zero it never moves anywhere uh, we just get rid of the key you don't need it um, baking animation is something that you do want to have okay and it should match the timeline you cannot trim your animation export here you cannot do it just understand that okay you have to trim it here you have to trim your timeline it doesn't matter if there's keys after the timeline it will trim those out so like if I, if I have an animations going from 0 to 80 and there's keyframes all up in this area over here I can just trim my timeline to 40 and export this should actually update when you export if not just type it in uh, this is only controlling how many keys are baked along the timeline so if I were to say 40 right here I'm gonna get a keyframe on every frame up until 40 and then whatever the keyframes originally were will be left over after but I will still get an 80 frame animation so we'll come here to deformations skins and morphs are always safe skins are absolutely necessary morphs aren't always necessary however it never hurts if you don't have morph targets they don't get included so not a big deal embed media would only be if you need to uh, use this in another rendering engine other than something like UE4 like taking it over into Maya or something else so you can add all of the textures uh, or if you're giving it to somebody else in you know in like 3D Studio or something here. I'm going to stick with 2014 and 15. Okay. Uh, y up is just default. Okay. I am in centimeters. My character is actually half the height of Manny the Mannequin from UE4. So, and that is by design. I took my character's half size to get them as small as I could feasibly go without breaking a physics engine. And then I compensate the other direction by making my world really large, and that's how I'm achieving the scale and there we go so whatever your character scale would be so I believe that's it we really only need two things on the very first thing here okay um, I, I really hate this don't don't check that it will triangulate your mesh uh, even bringing back in straight back in so we'll just hit okay and I'll get an issue um, some non orthogonal matrices which uh, and then um, some turned edges here on the rat I actually had and it tells you uh, if you want to retain this edge orientation you need to enable preserve edge orientation in order to enable the plugin to convert the objects to editable mesh and automatically triangulate them that is the last thing we want to enable this goddamn program to do for us getting triangles back into here is more than frustrating okay getting them in the engine is perfectly normal getting them in UE4 that's what you expect and if you take an FBX out of UE4 you better expect triangles coming out but when you come out of like max and go back into max if you dumped it to triangles there you just you just dumped on your own head for no reason
Um, there are a few things I kind of wouldn't mind changing on this guy while I'm here. Number one being that these toes are named Digit, but you know what? It really doesn't hurt, so I'm just going to leave it. But that is the character. And as we look, remember, with Cat, you can only ever access the Cat tool stuff if you only have one object selected. As soon as you have more than one, it's just kind of like, hey, what are you talking about? Uh, but as long as I got one of them, I'm okay. So now I can just go back into play mode, and this will put me into the idle animation because it's unignored. Okay? And he'll just stand there and he'll idle. So what I can do is I can just grab transform like that. Okay? And the reason this works for me and it grabs everything, and if it doesn't for you, it's because you don't have select children set. Okay? And we will export selected. No mesh selected on this one. Okay? So this is going to be tutor rat. We're just going to call this um, T underscore idle. TR underscore idle. Okay? I'm going to go through this again because, like I said, I cannot keep. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going back to 2016 if this stays the case, but I cannot keep. This is not, you know, doing me any good. So now that we're doing the animations, it's actually. Whoa, why, why did that happen? It's important that this gets set. Okay, and then that should actually be all I really need to do. Uh, I could do that, but it doesn't change a whole lot. You can see as soon as I changed it, even that's irritating. Okay, so we hit OK, and I don't care about the the errors. And then we'll grab one object again, just one of them, and then we'll ignore idle. At which point now we should be moving. However, you'll see that this freaks out. Now, I don't always know why this happens. I think it has something to do with, you know, just ignoring and turning layers off. Because as you can see, it's, it's literally not updating at all. And you might think, oh, you know, well, maybe it's OK, and I'll just export anyway. Now, the fact is, it's actually not going to export with the motion in here. If, if it looks bad in Max, just remember this. If it looks bad in Max, it's bad. OK, and Max doesn't lie about that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes things can look good in Max, and they're truly not good, but if it definitely looks bad in Max, then it's definitely bad. So I found that sometimes this can literally just be like boop boop and just turn something on and then off and there it goes. Now in this case I actually want linear motion because I don't want that sway back and forth. So I'll have it just pick up that and now we're back to good. So I can just go control page down, okay, because I had the root selected. Same thing as just clicking here. Got that and now we're going to export selected again and this will be TR walk. Okay, and we will hit save, and we will come here and fix this crap again because it's broken for me. And we want to bake it. Trust me, I say save it, and I say, hey, I, s I saved it. <laughs> this is awesome. It totally worked. And then I hit OK, and then I come over here to like look for that awesome preset name, and it never shows up, so I, it doesn't make a difference. And that should be it. Okay, now, I'm actually um, just going to take one second to, to say something. There's another bug that I've seen with Cat that's happened to me a few times, and I don't. it's another one that I don't understand that's a, a kind of akin to the root motion shadow play thing. Uh, that every once in a while I'll bring a character in after doing it and during the animations one of the bones for some reason during the animation is like doing this kind of thing. It's just it's just jerking around and I don't know what it is. And it might be two, it might be the hand, it's just going like this. During the whole thing it's just doing this. And I'm like, what? And it doesn't make any sense. And then I'll come back and I'll close it and I'll open it and I'll export it again and it'll be fine. So it's another one of those weird ones. I hope we don't see that this time. I genuinely don't, but don't be all that weirded out if we do. Okay, so here we go. Here's the folder with the assets. So I'm going to grab the SK mesh first. We can do them all at once, but uh, the problem is, is that if it registers this one to come in first, which needs this one, the skeleton, uh, then you can't do it. You're like screwed. So always just do the skeletal mesh by itself so that you can anchor down that skeleton and the physics asset and everything into the into your assets. Uh, because in this case, we don't want, you know, we're, we're not picking a skeleton, we're creating it. Now let's just go over some of this stuff here real quick. Uh, I believe most of it's default. Um, 
I do want to preserve the smoothing groups. I don't have any morph targets, so I don't care. Uh, all this I'm keeping the same. I'm not doing materials and textures because I simply don't have any. Um, and I don't I don't like doing this anyway. It just creates a whole bunch of mess. I, I, I much prefer to bring in my textures, create a new material, drag them in, just do it, do it by hand. I, I actually enjoy it. So we'll bring him in and we'll see what we get. He should be fine. I think. Again, that, that weird bug could show up. And it might be because I'm doing this whole thing with Camtasia running, which would be weird. Now it's going to tell me, hey, these are missing from the bind pose, tail one. They're, okay, they're not vert weighted, and they in fact are not vert weighted in any way whatsoever. So here I now have my rat, who's essentially uh, a duplicate of, of the guy that I had brought in previously. It's the, the same basic thing. But let's go ahead and pray that the animations aren't jittery and broken because like I said I am now recording so we don't want the mesh and we want to pick the skeleton which is going to be Tudor Rat skeleton here okay and we'll leave everything else the same okay I do keep all of this the same I've fiddled with this thing before but I've never really gotten anything to really change so I don't mess with it and yep see It's Camtasia. I, I don't know why this happens. It's just Camtasia. I, and, and here's the thing. If I pause and redo it, it still happens. I actually have to stop recording and then do it. So I'm going to fix that. I am literally going to re-export without Camtasia running, uh, which means I have to splice the two videos together. But that's not that big of a deal because Camtasia, I have, always have to produce them anyway, so it's a matter of nothing. Uh, and then I'll come back and you should see that this is fine. Because as you can see, that animation's not all dickered and screwed up on this guy. He's the same guy. He's 100% clean. He's not doing this. And you can bet your ass that if I bring in the other animation, it's going to be the exact same thing. Maybe I won't bet my ass on that. It doesn't look as bad. Let's pop hop root motion. Does that change anything? Interesting. Interesting, that one's okay. So the, the motion layer came out okay. When I did this the last time, um, it was this animation that was way worse. One of his feet was flipping up and down all crazy. Just one of them. Just going and I was like, what? And his head was jerking the same way we see the um, idol here. I mean, right? That's... And, it, and, and in case you're curious, that movement is in the bone. It's, it's not just like the mesh. It's, it's not like a weird glitch like that. This is there in the bone. Um, and here's the other thing. If I bring this animation back into the, the FBX in Max, all of this jittery crap, it's there. It truly is. So, um, yeah, I don't know how to fix it other than just stop recording, so I'm going to try that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back, and like I expected, I did the exact same thing, and I, I just got no, no problems whatsoever. What is that? It's the pelvis. I mean the um, rib cage, right? Yeah. It's got a weird movement in it. It's not skinned anything though, and it doesn't actually drive anything, which is weird because it should drive the collarbones if it's doing that. So that animation is being undid by the collarbones. Huh, weird. Anyways, he's smooth, and both of the animations are good. Right? So I now have my mesh and here. Okay, so now let's talk about the root motion real quick. It really is a matter of just checking this box. If you don't check it, you'll see him walk on a line. Okay, and he'll return back here every loop point. Uh, now, just as a small hint, I think that if you wanted to strip out the root motion, uh, the actual, you know, of him moving, but you didn't want to use root motion, you, there's two ways I think you can do that. Number one, I think you can just check this and then tell his animation blueprint not to use it. Uh, and then, or I think you can just do this, 
which just forces the root bone to be locked in place. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't transfer or, or extract any motion or anything like that. So the cool thing about authoring animations with root motion that you know sends the character out is if you don't if you can't use it, it's glitchy or you don't want it for some reason, you can turn it off without actually using it. So in our case, we want to use it. So let's go ahead now and move on. We now have these things. I'll go ahead and save this real quick. We have two perfectly working animations, in my opinion. They're working fine. So what we're going to do is we are now going to create a animation blueprint. So we'll come here, create off of the uh, skeleton and in blueprint, and we'll call this uh, we'll call this TR and in BP. Okay, and we'll come in here, and now we can close this down because it's open here as well. If we come over to skeleton, you can see it just fine. Okay, we got all of our things here, and here's our graph. Now, here's the thing about root motion. We are no longer going to be using, I'm actually going to take this over to another screen so that I can cheat and make things faster and not make any dumb guesses. Okay, and this was my other animation blueprint, which I don't need that right now. And this is, okay, so I haven't done anything here yet and I don't even have a character. So let's make a character. So I'll make a blueprint class, we'll pick character, and this will be tutor rat character. Okay, and we'll just set this up fairly quickly. We'll pick up the mesh here, and we'll go TUT for tutor rat SK mesh. He's obviously going to need to come down here like so. Uh, let's take a look at the capsule. And let's try, just as a random guess, 42.5 by 20. And let's try this, just as a random guess, at negative 44.5. Oh, look. That happens to be exactly where you're supposed to go and what everything's supposed to be set at. Long live the RNG. Okay, so with that, we'll now go into the event graph. Okay, and we pretty much don't need any of this. Uh, all we need are our basic movements. So the first movement that we're going to take care of here is moving forward. Okay, so if we just type move like forward, we get that axis event, right? This is kind of the one of the standard ones that we get built in, right? You know, this is when you press W or S or the, or the um, you know your controller. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to simply promote this to a variable, and we're just going to call this forward because it's the forward axis value. That's it. Okay. In our animation blueprint, we're going to come over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blend here and I'm going to blend from my asset browser here my two animations, idle and walk. Okay. I'm going to blend idle into A, and then B will be walk, and this will be my walk blend value. Okay, that's it, and we will fire that into here, and you should see as soon as I compile, he now starts idling. Okay, and if I set walk blend here to one, uh, he starts walking. Okay, let's come over here to animation. Let's go to walk here real quick and let's make sure that that is over here. Now the other thing that we want to do is on the animation blueprint itself, we come over here to edit defaults. Okay, and notice how our root motion isn't coming through here. And the reason is, is because we have our root motion mode set to root motion for montages only, which this isn't a montage. We need actually root motion from everything. And now he stops. He's now in place. Okay. And if I set, go back to editing the preview. If I set this to one, okay, he walks, but it's in place, seemingly. Okay. So we'll just put that back to zero. So our blend seems to be working just fine. Now we need to pick up some information. Okay. So what we're going to do is cheat, obviously. 
and by cheat I mean I'm looking at my other screen. And what I'm going to do is take initialize. Okay, this is essentially begin play of an animation blueprint. This only gets fired once, so it's a good place to do uh, certain things that you don't want to have happen all the time. This is in fact a tick. Okay, so basically we'll just cast this, and I just want to cast it to tutor, right? And then I'll just promote that. Well, I didn't actually need to type promote, it was right there. I, I kind of do that sometimes. And then I'll just say uh, tutor rep. So now I have an access to a already cast version of the owner, okay? Which he's, it actually doesn't own it yet, by the way, because I never actually told it which one to pick. So if I type tutor here, tr, sorry, tr and MVP. There we go. Uh, and we should actually see once I compile, that should start kicking in. Okay, so TR and MVP, Tutor Rat SK Mesh, and you can see there he is. He's breathing. So we know we're at least animating. All right, let's go back to the animation blueprint. And now we need to basically grab Tutor Rat and get forward. Okay. And basically, I mean, we could kind of do something. I mean, you'd think you could do something like this, but this is just very abrupt. So we're not going to do something gross like that. Um, what we're actually going to do is something a little bit more elegant, but not by much. And I'm going to get a branch out here, and I'm going to check if this is greater than zilch, not greater than or equal to. That's a very different case, equal to. Greater than is what we want. And basically, so if we are greater than, we're going to date walk blend, and we are going to right click, we're going to go F interp two, and we're actually going to do a constant because uh, I'm I'm purposely removing any kind of ease in or ease out to this. Uh, I want kind of a linear blend, uh, and I'm not sure if that's actually the best, but. I'm going to try it. So we're going to go from blend, uh, walk blend, whatever it is, to a target of one. Now we need to get world delta seconds here. And we can pop that in there. And I found an interp speed of one seems to actually be okay. And then what we do is we set that there. Okay. So if we're greater, if the forward axis is greater than zero, okay then go ahead and blend this, basically start interpreting this value, which will blend this value, okay, which is, I know it's kind of confusing, it's called walk blend, and I'm saying I'm blending the value. That's what these do, okay, tries to reach a target, okay, uh, and then um, if not, we'll just take the same thing by duplicating it, and we'll just set the target back to zero. Now this basically gives us the ability to start and stop. And if we look at the walk blend, that should come in, that should get red. So, two to rat character, let's just come in here. Make sure we pick that. I have a blank new rat player control, I'll just use that, I didn't do anything to it. Um, what happened? Where did it go? Oh, I have a branch fail point, hang on. Okay. Yeah, it was just because I had the other thing open. Uh, so the one thing that I am missing, however, is a camera. So we'll get a camera there. Let's also get a spring arm. We'll link the camera to the spring arm. Okay, we'll take the spring arm. I'll go ahead and shorten it just a little bit, and I'll, uh, I think I'll pitch it up a million degrees. Mm, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to just rotate it because I want to. I want to see the. Um, in fact, I want to actually point it at his feet just just to make sure, like something like that. And in fact, hmm, can I change this to where's it? World? Yeah, like oop, like that. I kind of want to look at it from the side. I know it's going to be weird for me to control, but I just I want to. We want to see it for now. We can fix that back if we need to. Okay. Okay, here we go. So if I press forward, there we go. We start walking forward. Huh. Interesting that this character does not have that Camtasia bug with the root motion speed. <laughs> I don't get it. It's the same thing. Okay, so if I hold forward, I start walking. If I let go, I come to a stop. 
If you notice that the character sinks a little bit into the ground, that's because I screwed up the animation. That's actually my fault. So you can ignore that. All right, but that's it. I so saw if I move and I let go. If I press backwards or anything, I don't get nothing. So we can set the rest of that up here. It's pretty much all done in the animation blueprint. So what we want to do here is we want to actually expose the pin for play rate. You click that down here and I'm going to go ahead and promote that and we'll call this walk play rate. Okay. And we'll go ahead and compile first so that we can throw in a default value of one. It's already there. All right. So essentially this is going to keep the, the play rate going. Back in the event graph here, we're going to do things a little differently. So we have walk play rate as a variable. And what I'm going to do is if I'm going to be walking forward, I'm just going to go ahead and also set that play rate to one just in case it wasn't already because it might not be because we're going to go in here and we're going to start fiddling with some stuff. So I am going to dupe this here because we need another check. We actually have three cases that we need to distinguish specifically. Uh, we have zero, above zero, and below zero, and they're separate. No, e you know, above and equals. We can't do that. So in this case, we're just going to dump this one, and we're going to check if we're less than zero. Okay. Because if, if we're not greater than zero, we are either equal or we are less than. Now we're going to check there and we're going to branch separately here. Okay, it would be the branch, branch Davidians down here. All right, and what we'll do is we'll just make a copy of this. And this is going to be a little abrupt for now, but I'm going to essentially say if we are less than zero, we're going to set a play rate of negative one. However, we're going to blend to one again. Otherwise, we blend back to zero. Okay? If we're not greater than zero and we're not less than zero, we only have one option. We're equal zero. So that's all we need to do. Give it a test. Again, this is still built off based off of this one value. No notice that what we're not doing is that. We don't use this anymore because we're using root motion. The movement is driven by the animation. So you do not actually it's part of this but you don't this right here is going to have will have no bearing i can set this to 60 billion or, or negative six it ain't going to make a difference oh we're getting that thingy again it's because this um other animation blueprints open here we go okay so forward i'll let go backward goes backward let go forward straight to backward straight to forward straight to backward it's like perfect straight to forward let it stop come back that's root motion now I don't have any mouse movement so let me that's not the basics of a character movement so let's get that in now this would actually be done on the character here okay so we have the input axis of move forward uh, we also need the mouse input so what we'll do is we'll look for the input axis for turn, uh, I think we can say axis turn right here. Okay. And all we need to do here is just basically add controller yaw input. Compile. And now I can turn left and right. Okay. I can't look up and down. And I'm still kind of, you know, I'm caddy, caddy wampus over here to the side. But I did that on purpose. So now, however, for looking up, which is actually called look up, um, we don't add controller pitch input. Okay, that would spin our character into a, like he's planking. Uh, what we need to do is actually control the spring arm on this one. And we're just going to add some rotation to it. So basically, we'll just add relative rotation. Oops. I had it. 
and I just clicked one too high relative rotation. There we go. And we can split this, split, destruct, and we can just take this into pitch. Now I know from experience that this is inverted. By from experience, it's sitting there staring at me on the other screen. So now I can look up, down, left, right. I can move forwards, backwards. I have your basic character. Uh, let's go ahead and just reset the spring arms uh, rotation here. And now I'm directly behind him. I am looking at his feet. That's entirely up to you. But where you want him to look. Maybe a little bit like that. All right. And again, the animation and your, your movement speed is driven directly by this animation. And to prove that, uh, let's go over here to this walk. And we'll increase the speed of the animation, which officially increases the speed of my character. Okay. Now, you do not want to, if I want my character to walk like twice as fast as this, I need to author a completely brand new animation that has him step further. I do not want to just speed up a walk cycle, okay? That only works for insects. That does not work for anything else. I don't even know if it works for fish. Um, it dirt, certainly don't work for birds. It don't work for humanoids or animals. It just looks like Benny Hill. Right? We're not doing that. So everything's working. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, that does get your basics. Now I will follow this up with uh, sideways movement, strafing left and right, and diagonal movement. That'll be the next trick. And then maybe we'll move into getting him to crouch, and maybe we'll move into maybe getting him to do some dynamic turnarounds or something. I don't know. I haven't really tried that yet, but I have some theories on it. Um, but so far it's okay. And obviously I don't want that to actually be that fast. I don't have a run yet either. We're not using any kind of a blend mode. We're doing this entirely in the animation here. Now these blends can be easily added into states and put into state machines. In fact, you could use a state machine instead of the blend if you wanted to. Um, I just find that this is kind of an easy way to do it, at least when it's the only thing that he has to do. Because it's different when you press forward while you're holding shift for a sprint or double tap forward for a dodge. I also haven't tested the dodge roll yet. I'd like to test that to see if the root motion on that thing's working like a charm. It should. So we'll test that in a future video. Uh, anyways, this is Hippos signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I actually did enjoy this one myself. So I'll see you guys in the next one.